Hi guys. Well, a fairly pleasant Sunday morning has turned into just another gray, gloomy, yuck, depressing Sunday afternoon here in the end times. On, uh, now this gloomy Sunday afternoon, <clears throat> September 12th, 2021, and as I sit here bumbling through my uh, increasingly just pointless existence. Uh, <laughs> been trying to wonder what to do with this story. Uh, coming from the Independent over there in England, uh, I originally, you know, since more and more of my doom and gloom uh, has moved over there to Collapse Chronicles, where that little eco-pussy Sam Mitchell over there, what was I... Sam Mitchell being accused of, an, I am an old man rambling on in front of a camera. According to Reddit Collapse, I guess, uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe, nowhere worthy of mention on Reddit, but I'm glad to see that Collapse Chronicles uh, and that little eco-pussy Sam Mitchell is at least being noticed somewhere on the planet. Uh, <laughs> so, this article from the Independent uh, by some bliss ninny, some bliss ninny, I guess he's some sort of climate warrior over there in England, named Donna Shad McCarthy, titled, If We Want to Protect the Planet, We Must Care for Ourselves. I didn't know whether to make this an ironic uh, doomsday sermon at Collapse Chronicles, but then I, but then I realized that some people might actually jump to the conclusion that uh, I was cheer, I was cheering this little bliss ninny on. Then I was thinking, you know, running it in my hopium files yesterday, uh, but it's just I, I I don't know, just not quite right for that. I have gotten several comments recently, I don't know what the point of these comments are, is that Sam Mitchell, the little eco-pussy Sam Mitchell in Collapse Chronicles is sounding more and more like this eco-Nazi hambone little tail and Humpty Dumpty tribe. <clears throat> so I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's probably a bad thing. So uh, I, I, I took a, uh, Sam Mitchell wisely decided to move this one over to Humpty Dumpty Tribe because I think that uh, the few listeners I have left on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, I'm getting about, I would say, one-tenth the traffic here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe than I was getting uh, before the corona panic. So for the few of you still sticking with me, I just want to, uh, I, I, I don't know, do with this article what you want, but it certainly, uh, <clears throat> it certainly brightened this uh, eco-Nazi Sunday morning today. <clears throat> Take it away, whoever you are. Donna Chad McCarthy, if we want to protect the planet, we must care for ourselves. This is how to keep from burning out being a climate warrior. <clears throat> I'm sorry, climate protector. That's his name. Donna Chad is a self-proclaimed climate protector. Okay, you're, and you're hearing it from a real live climate protector. <clears throat> if climate protectors or to successfully keep campaigning to stop our planet from burning up, we must also ensure that we ourselves do not burn out. It has been 30 years since a brutal accident while performing with the Royal Opera Ballet <coughs> led to my awakening to the destruction that humanity is inflicting on our natural world I was doing a swallow dive. <laughs> I, I was doing a swallow dive from the shoulders of a fellow dancer and the four guys that were supposed to catch me missed. 
I hit the stage chin first from 12 feet with no warning. Miraculously, I survived, but that was a life-changing moment. I, I bet it was a, uh, a life-changing moment. <clears throat> so why was this a life-changing moment for the self-proclaimed climate protector? This was because Linda Much, the therapist I saw following the accident, said she was going with a group of alternative health practitioners to visit the Yanomami people in the heart of the Amazon. She said somebody had dropped out and would I like to hop on a gas-sucking airplane and fly from England to the Amazon rainforest and back again as my job as a new climate protector. <clears throat> to cut a long story short, I ended up spending several weeks by myself with the Yanomami tribe. <clears throat> it was there that I first witnessed the relentless destruction of the precious Amazon forest and all her natural abundance, and where I first learned about the continuing heartbreaking genocide of its indigenous peoples. Six million indigenous people lived there when our rapacious civilization first arrived in the 17th century. There are now less than 600,000 and the killings continue year after year. While the Yano Mami said they wanted no more outsiders to come, they did invite me to join their tribe. And when I said I had to get back on a gas-sucking airplane and return home to be a climate protector in my native England, they made me an honorary member in a parting ceremony. Yes. This awakening to the crisis nature was in broke my heart, and I resolved to do what I could do to stop our destructive consumerism, which is what is driving the bulldozers into the heart of the Amazon and threatening my adoptive tribe with extinction. I understood that if, this was 30 years ago, I understood that if I was to devote myself in loving service with others to protecting nature and humanity, then I had to also lovingly look after myself. <coughs> if I want to avoid the burnout that has impacted so many others on this mission, I know exactly what you mean, brother. I resolved to put my effort into healing my own personal traumas in parallel with my contribution to healing nature. Okay. So he is sharing what he has learned in 30 years of healing his own personal traumas as a climate protector. I invested what I could afford in my personal development training, therapies, acupuncture, massage, massage and yoga. The primary spiritual teaching underpinning my campaigning was Gandhi's maxim to be the change one wishes to see in the world. And I am very embarrassed, guys. I have to sheepishly admit, you can probably still find this uh, embarrassing rant. One of my very first rants when I first started going down this rabbit hole <clears throat> when I still was actually clinging to some hopium, I actually had, up on the rock, I believe, I actually had the obligatory uh, be the change you want to be pep talk that all people first going down this rabbit hole that he's talking about. You, It should be the Gandhi, be the change you want the world to be. I'm not even sure Gandhi ever said this. Uh, the perhaps mythical Gandhi, be the change that you want the world to be uh, part of the, you know, the stages of grief. 
anyway, so that was his uh, brush with Gandhi on his spiritual journey. I resolved to make my own life and home as green as I practically could. As I practically could. Ecological campaigning is more spiritually powerful if it is based on the moral authority of practicing what we preach. In my view, this does not mean ecological perfection. No, this does not mean ecological perfection. So don't worry if you need to run off and hop on a plane to the Amazon rainforest to hang out with the Anamami people. You know, just take a little pass from Gandhi and, uh, and do that. Yes. So just, just before you freak out, this does not mean ecological perfection, but to do as much as we can with the money, time, and knowledge that we individually possess. Yes, it is actually pretty. You don't need much money uh, to say we are so fucked. Okay. Early on, I was blessed to attend a week. What are you? Is it a bear? Is it a bear or are you just looking for an excuse to get out of here? Are you telling the folks we're so fucked? Early on, I was blessed to attend a week-long retreat with the inspiring former editor of Resurgence magazine, Satish Kumar, from whom I learned the concept of the two-legged path of eco-spirituality. One leg of the eco-spiritual path is to pursue one's personal spiritual journey, and the second leg is to take actions in the physical world to protect and restore ecology and radically reduce carbon emissions when you're not on an airplane flying to the Amazon rainforest to hang out on an ayahuasca retreat with a bunch of other clueless fucking moron little uh, greeny blistinities. <clears throat> All of these approaches help me avoid burnout over the first decade of some fraught campaigns at both grassroots level and in mainstream politics. Okay. In my second decade, through yoga, I stumbled upon gay tantra. All right. We have gone from yoga to gay tantra to, uh, Save your plant to save yourself and your planet. All right. Through the work I did with my teachers at Tantra for Gay Men, I released as much of my personal baggage as I could. I, I bet you did, brother. I, I don't want to know uh, what your personal baggage that you released at Tantra for Gay Men. Uh, I, I don't even want to go there. Don't even want to go there. But I, am, I have no doubt that you released as much as your personal baggage as you could, enabling me to access more of my personal power to be a more effective climate protector. Dun, 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 dun. So anybody looking to be more effective as a climate protector, I highly recommend Tantra for gay men. Okay, so that took 10 years, I guess, to unload his personal baggage. I guess that took 10 years. Okay. Bring us up to date here, brother. My third decade, you know, being a, a climate protector has been marked by integrating much of what I learned on my personal inward journey by attending some ecological leadership retreats at various Earth Spirit Centers. Earth Spirit Centers in the UK, 
including Embercombe in Dorset and Kai My Bone in Gwynedd. Such courses allow participants to relate to them from the context of one's own spiritual beliefs or non-beliefs, there you go, without any imposed external spiritual dogma. I bet, I, yeah, I, I believe that like I believe I won't come in your mouth and the check's in the mail. Anyway, it really does not matter whether you relate to your spirituality as the thought processes of a purely physical human being or as intuition, insight, spiritual or divine presence. What matters is if one is prepared for an inner journey that acknowledges what current truths may be for you where you are currently engaged in the world and with yourself. Well, I think we all know uh, I've been on this spiritual journey maybe because I did not stop by Tantra for gay men. Maybe that is the reason uh, I have ended up after 12 years on my inner journey with we are so fucked. Anyway, but I'm going to... I need to get a new hat. Uh, Tantra for gay men. I can get rid of the we are so fucked. Anyway, alright. Embercomb. Embercomb or comb was founded by the inspirational Mac McCartney who had spent many years training in Native American spiritual traditions. Yes. Mac McCartney really sounds like a Native American spiritual traditionalist to me, with their emphasis on the spiritual integration of the human and natural worlds. I did Embercom's introductory course to ecological leadership called The Journey. There you go. There's a very original uh, title, The Journey in 2015. It was a profound experience and prepared me for the next phase when my campaigning moved into arrestable Gandhian peaceful direct action with Occupy Democracy and Extinction Rebellion. Nine arrests later, nine arrests later, and just one conviction for refusing to stop sitting on Waterloo Bridge and the 2019 Extinction Rebellion, I was ready this summer, this summer, to dive into their advanced program called the Descent. The Descent consists of a six-day ceremonial process with three days of fasting and sleeping out in nature alone. That's otherwise called a, uh, a vision quest. I don't know if you've heard my uh, story of my own vision quest when I was almost attacked and eaten by a bear. Uh, that was my vision quest, but that's on a, another video you can find somewhere on here. Yes, a key theme you know, of his vision quest or his descent was the indigenous concept of making decisions that take into account protecting the needs of seven generations going forward. Like, if you still believe that there are going to be seven generations of humans going forward on this planet, yes, it was a deeply moving experience, reconnecting me with the mystery of nature. As I say, it almost got me killed and eaten by a drunken bear, and it offered me a chance to reflect on what my path should now be as an elder earth protector. Okay, he is now a self-proclaimed elder earth protector. 
I share my personal path in order to convey that it is crucial that all of us protectors also lovingly care for ourselves in whatever way feels true for each of us. Mine is to go make a BLT for lunch as we seek together to protect humanity and nature from the greatest threats we have ever faced. And next to that, we have an ad for these are the European dishes we drool over. Yes. Here is 50 photos of Stevie Nicks before the fame. How about the best products to care for protective styles at the beach? Yes. Oh, so if you enjoyed this, now I don't know whether, how many of these are uh, written by, I uh, cannot remember this guy's name. I don't know how many of these were written by Donna Chad McCarthy, but uh, I also read uh, a piece, an opinion piece he wrote titled, Stop Using China as a distraction from our own carbon emissions record. I just did a short video over there, that little eco-pussy, Sam Mitchell, uh, just did a video over there at uh, Collapse Chronicles, which you can find, uh, I think I titled it, is Collapse Chronicles a guilty of China bashing or human bashing when uh, I respond, but I'm gonna, you can go over there and find that about stop using China as a distraction from our own carbon emissions record. And not sure if he wrote one, both, or neither of these. Here's an opinion piece COP26 may be our last <sighs> hope. And next to that one is COP26, our last chance to save the planet. But I am quite sure uh, we will have a lot more uh, COP26 rants coming up. But anyway, I just had to share uh, the Donna Chad McCarthy advice on how to keep from burning out as you go on your own spiritual inner journey <clears throat> to reach your own conclusions. And I think we know what the conclusions are anybody who has been on this inward spiritual journey I am now been down here for 13 years in this cesspool called the Doomosphere. There is one conclusion. We all know what it is. We are so fucked. And with that, I'm going to get out there and uh, make me a BLT, but we're just going to close as long as I'm here talking to myself. I love this. That I can't make this shit up. From the onion, we're going to close also with this one. From the onion, study, majority of po U.S. population, one disappointing sandwich away from complete mental breakdown. Noting that the nation's mental health crisis had left Americans more vulnerable than ever to profound bouts of anxiety and depression, a study published last week found that a majority of the population was one disappointing sandwich away from a complete breakdown. Quote, our findings indicate that 61% of Americans are a single dry turkey club or underwhelming rumen away from total 
emotional collapse, said the study's lead author, a Yale University psychologist, Diana Lillis, who cited a case in which an adult male with no history of mental illness was found crying and shaking in a fetal position after a chicken parm hero he had looked forward to all morning was served without enough marinara sauce. Quote, quoting the shrink, these were not simply cases these were not simply cases in which someone received a bad sandwich or in which a sandwich order arrived with the wrong condiments. These were instances in which an individual's emotional investment in a sandwich was such that they were totally overwhelmed with despair when, for example, inadequately toasted bread or an excess of dressing gave their sandwich a less than satisfying texture. We even documented several cases in which the trauma of a meatball falling out of a sub and onto the ground required subjects to be hospitalized." Close quote. While the study recommended Americans reduce the psychological demands they place on sandwiches, it also suggested that most mental illness could be successfully treated by administering one single perfectly constructed BLT to the patient. You heard it here. And so I am going to construct, I am going to administer to myself a perfectly constructed BLT to stumble along for one more day. I highly suggest you get out there and administer a perfectly constructed BLT to yourself while you still can. My guys. Yes, little dog. Would you like a perfectly constructed BLT?